Ah, a cook report special called The Devil's Work. Well, we're just waiting for the cook report to come before our very eyes. We hope it will be in just a few seconds' time. Here we go. Like this mother's story of her young daughter's ritual ordeal. She was made pregnant and child was allowed um, to grow to a certain age and then they aborted her baby and on a sacrificial table they sacrificed the live born child, not fully developed what people call a fetus, but as a mother I call him a child. Tonight we seek out those who do the devil's work. Satanism is on the increase. In fact, uh, it's going through an explosion at the present time. Uh, and has been over the last 30 years. So Satan's PR is pretty good? Satan's PR is uh, doing a very good job these days. And the problem is the churches are not combating it as they should do. Satan's senior PR, his self-appointed representative on Earth, is Michael Aquino. He's arriving in Birmingham from the United States with his wife and high priestess, Lilith. He's on his way to ordain a new British high priest for his American-based Temple of Set. Satanism is a very old religion that's based upon an individual's ethical responsibility for his own actions rather than the projection of that responsibility onto any institution. Or as Christians would see it, everything that's evil, and a license to do whatever you want, really. No, that would be perhaps a Christian interpretation of what Satanism is. But they would characterize what you do as evil and what they do as good. Only, I think, from their own stereotypes or misunderstandings of what our religion is. And while the Prince of Darkness pushes his deceptive PR, victims of Satanism gather for help and succor in the Reverend Kevin Logan's Lancashire Church. The Lord's my Reverend Logan specializes in counseling those who've been scarred by Satanism. He believes the threat is not being taken seriously enough. This is a special service. Service of healing for people from all over the country. Each one of us has been affected by the evil works of the devil in various ways. Satan screwed up my life completely, and I'm fortunate because I got out. People who've had to counsel those who were victims. My children have seen evil and been touched by evil, and thankfully now they are beginning to know some other life. The feeling of wanting vengeance. They've had ritualistic things done to them with snakes, with crucifixes. They've been taught to pray to the devil. Well, they were, in fact, brainwashed. 
Most of these people are too frightened to be identified. Some of the children are wards of court and may not be identified. Jesus, we ask that you will be with Amongst the victims is the 12-year-old son of Jean Bolonovsky. You will give them your protection, that you will Well, it been made to God. eat human secretion, it been drugged. It's changed his whole attitude. He's petrified of going out on his own and things now. When it first all come out, they told him if he ever told anyone what happened to him, they'd kill me and they'd kill him. So that's one of the reasons he dared talk about it. Plus, um, whenever we did go out, he kept saying there was somebody following him and he was turning around all the time. In the end, he couldn't cope with it. One night, he set his bedroom alight, saying that he had to burn the devil out. And he was just totally wrecked by the old mess. It makes me feel angry and sad. Angry that um, some people can treat children and uh, susceptible adults in this way. And sad because those, ch those children are going to have to live a life affected by what these adults have done. According to the Reverend Logan, Satanism is a very saleable commodity, with films like The Omen and Rosemary's Baby, and heavy metal pop groups like Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden and Ozzy Osbourne, in turn influenced by satanic books, like those written by the late Aleister Crowley, the evil father of British Satanism. In his writings, Crowley advocated human sacrifice. He suggested the victim should be killed within the circle, and for the highest spiritual working, a male child of perfect innocence was the most suitable and satisfactory victim. Mr. Crowley is also the inspiration for one of Ozzy Osbourne's biggest hits. Others may disagree, but Osbourne says it's more showbiz than sinister. I wrote about Alistair Crowley because in rock and roll, when at that point, but this, I didn't know anything about Alistair Crowley. And Kenny kept coming up, this guy Crowley, and, I, and I, read, I read a little bit about him, and he was a pretty bizarre guy, I understand. How do you feel about people who say Ozzy Osbourne's music sometimes is a sort of doorway to darkness? You know, it's, it's down the slippery slope I, to the I, devil. I, I, You've heard I about this? Of course I have every day of my life. It's, uh, I don't... Uh, I can't really take it in, because in any form of... Uh, uh, um, like fan and, and rock star, you'll get your people who'll just take it for the face value, and you, you get a minority who'll take it for real. P to be honest with you, really, I just take it as tongue in cheek. All I can say is that I am not into Satanism, I'm not a devil worshipper, I've never been involved in black magic personally at all. I, I wouldn't know how to con It takes me all my time to conjure myself out of bed in the morning, and I don't conjure up the devil. But heavy metal fan Carl Hughes who calls himself Carl Crowley Hughes, did try to conjure up the devil. He desecrated his local church in Conway and stole vestments and altar ornaments for use in his own satanic rituals. It changed your personality totally, it did with me. I dressed all in black, uh, long hair, pentagrams, at one time wore an inverted cross. At home, I had ritual equipment in my room, phallic candles and I had an altar cloth, I many books on the occult. He was arrested as he left the church and was convicted of desecration, but that was only the beginning of his problems. My mother threw me out. Uh, while I was out, she got the vicar to consecrate the house uh, with the holy water and that. Uh, I went to live in a tent, I had nowhere to live. And eventually I got back in with my mother, but it appeared at the time she was rather frightened of me. You thought you were a source of evil, perhaps? Yeah. 
but you didn't really know how far you'd gone and what you were dabbling in, did you? Well, you don't realise at the time. Uh, it's a really dangerous thing to get into, I suppose. It's dangerous and it's deadly. This is Andrew Newell, another heavy metal follower who also became ensnared in Satanism. He slept in a tomb in a Telford churchyard. The satanic rituals he practiced took him to jail for the killing of his best friend. In this bedroom, Newell stabbed Philip Booth five times around the heart. He's now serving seven years for manslaughter. West Mercia police believed it was a ritual killing. Chief Superintendent David Cole had a certain advantage in dealing with the Newell case. Unlike most of his colleagues, he dealt with satanic crime before. Well, when Newell was interviewed, he made a specific request that we shouldn't open a case, a record case, that was in his bedroom. Um, that is the case. And, of course, we opened it. And when we opened it, uh, we found a large number of uh, articles uh, a large number of books on the occult. Uh, we discovered <coughs> this manuscript, a document, uh, which contains two verses of a popular song. Um, and underneath the two verses are the words Lucifer, Leviathan, Satan, and Belial. Of course, those are all synonyms for the devil. Uh, and underneath that uh, was an inverted cross. You can see it's been cut out. Uh, and that cross was uh, found to be uh, human blood. Newell, like many other Satanists, bought books and satanic artifacts from this shop in Leeds. It's the biggest of its kind. Proprietor Chris Bray has admitted in the past he has some very dubious clients, but denies he has any responsibility for what they do. Unfortunately, there are people who are um, more inclined towards the sinister aspects of magic, towards the uh, darker aspects, primarily because it gives them either a vicarious thrill or an excuse for uh, their own sexual abnormalities. So there's nothing wrong with that, providing they do not harm another. Witchcraft, to the majority of people on the outside, tends to uh, smack of Satanism, which it is not. The actual religion of witchcraft is based on uh, the universal religion of paganism, which is at the root of all civilizations. It's a prehistoric religion, uh, and that gives us the sustenance to continue uh, by linking in with uh, the planetary and uh, seasonal cycles and becoming at one with the planet. So most people involved in witchcraft tend to be uh, uh, eco ecologically minded. They tend to uh, love animals and also be gregarious uh, and willing to help and serve others. And that's as far removed from the image of Satanism as you could get. But bound up in the religion of witchcraft, there is also the practice of magic. And magic is a power. It's um, an abstract power. It's the power of genius and creativity which courses through the universe. It's nothing at all secular. Uh, it can be applied by anyone. And magic is the method or the technique whereby you apply that formula. Uh, the power is a natural power. It's one that anybody can use. It, it actually holds you up. Magic is the intensive creative power which gives you thought, gives you reason to be. It's not secular at all. So therefore, uh, the application of it is a question of technique rather than belief. Once you understand that magic does work, you can use it for all facets. There's been a lot of talk about uh, black and white magic, uh, and uh, it's important to distinguish between the two. There isn't a, a generic kind of magic which is black. Uh, there is magic, pure and simple, but the use of it uh, depends on the good taste of the operator. Now, unfortunately, there are people in creation, uh, there must be room for them, for all potentialities, it's unfortunate that they do exist, who are 
um, more inclined towards the sinister aspects of magic, towards the uh, darker aspects, primarily because it gives them either a vicarious thrill or an excuse for uh, their own sexual abnormalities. So there's nothing wrong with that, providing they do not harm another. But unfortunately, because most of them are exhibitionists, they tend to be the ones that the newspapers get hold of. Uh, and that's the image that's been presented of occultism. Occultism is life itself to me. Uh, we are very committed people in what we do. Um, we're not uh, evangelical in the sense that we try to push it on other people, but we are here as an access point so that people can reach out to us. We never refuse any inquiries at all. And living without occultism, to me, is really like moving up, trying to run a race with one leg. It's, it's impossible. The sole criterion in magic is that it should work. Uh, there's an old witchcraft tenet which says that the goddess offers certainty, not faith. And that's very important. So it's um, jam now, not tomorrow. Uh, and uh, it, it, uh, it's a strange thing, but you, unless you have experienced magic work, you don't believe it. It is only a potential, it's a possibility. Uh, but the moment that you do experience it, it changes your whole life, and uh, very much to the good. The potential of it, I mean, think of it, if you, if you, if you haven't worked magic and you work a piece of magic and it works, the potentials are unlimited, and that is what people are doing. They're striving to complete themselves. It's their birthright, and it should not be denied them. The biggest of its kind. Proprietor Chris Bray has admitted in the past he has some very dubious clients, but denies he has any responsibility for what they do. We're not uh, evangelical in the sense that we try to push it on other people, but we are here as an access point so that people can reach out to us. We never refuse any inquiries at all. Three years on, Bray did refuse to be interviewed and threatened legal action when asked to explain his part in the current promotion of Satanism. We're being filmed from the inside, gentlemen. If you look through there, there's a Sanyo video camera being aimed at us. We wanted to question Bray about his publication, The Lamp of Thoth, which has carried want ads for dead bodies. Articles advocating sacrificial murder and is the platform for my... and is the platform for Michael Aquino's new British recruiting drive. Bray called the police to hold us at bay while he and his staff, in Halloween disguise, made their escape. Mr. Bray, we'd like to talk to you about the uh, business you conduct and about the kinds of activities you promote. We'd like to talk to you about uh, articles promoting murder, witchcraft, advertisements calling for dead bodies. There are many people who get into this disgusting business who wouldn't do so without you, Mr. Bray. What a pathetic display. Bray makes light of the dangers of Satanism, but some would say it is dangerous in any circumstances. One ex-Satanist now lectures there, nationally there on what she calls the doorway to danger. Maybe because you're curious. There may be some of you wondering what doorway to danger is all about. Um, Audrey Harper here says here she was once a prisoner of fear, well, a recruiting fine. agent for a coven which practiced child abuse and human real. sacrifice. I think it's a far bigger problem. I think we're only touching the uh, tip of it. Um, 
when you realize that, that all these places are self-governing, they can do what they like. Um, they attract homosexuals, they attract lesbians, they attract pedophiles. They attract homosexuals, they attract lesbians, they attract pedophiles because they can get away with it. Um, because the covens are so secret, even the satanic temples are secret. They can shift around. Um, if they think they've been rumbled, they just go to another building. So it is a big problem. But are we talking about just a few people in isolated parts of the country? No, we're not. We're talking, it is nationwide. In a year-long investigation, we've catalogued more than a score of recent serious cases with clear evidence of satanic ritual, abuse or crime. Some of the victims are being counseled by the Reverend Kevin Logan. In counselling, I have seen um, some terrible practices. I've heard some really grueling, really nasty things that have happened to youngsters, to children at puberty, for instance. Uh, a girl having to have sex on the altar, the act of initiation into Satanism itself. Um, children having to uh, eat uh, feces and to drink blood. And stomach-churning, horrible things that uh, these Satanists get up to. And the effect that this has on these young lives. Earlier this year, Nottingham was the scene of one of the biggest and certainly one of the most gruesome child abuse cases in British history, involving 36 members of one family. We've got masses of these drawings. Doing As they worked on the case, social workers, led by Judith Dawson, came to believe there were satanic influences at work. All around the world, there's been an increase in the practice of spiritism, fortune-telling, witchcraft and Satanism. This video seeks both to warn and inform the viewer about the possible dangers of any involvement with the occult. Here I was, giving credence to stars and planets without actually seeing the hand that actually put them into, into that position in the first place. My name's Judith Dawson and I'm a child abuse consultant from Nottinghamshire Social Services. In that job I spend most of my time having to help my department respond to families who've had problems particularly involving the abuse of children. Over the past seven or eight years, social services departments have had to come to terms with the fact that children have not only been physically abused within their families, but they've also been sexually abused. And that's been a very painful thing to get used to. We've had to be taken beyond belief because what we've learned is that children are not only sexually abused in some families, but that they're also ritualistically abused. That means that we have learned that some families, some adults, get involved with satanic groups whose main aim is to destroy everything that is good everything that's good about human life and human values. And one particular target in that would be that they should hurt and defile children. 
As you're probably aware, Christ said, touch not one hair of this child's head. Satanists believe that they should do the opposite of that. People like those Christian ministers are having to counsel youngsters time and time again. They get involved with the, the soft stuff, the horoscopes, the tarot cards, the Ouija boards. It draws them into um, this power that they don't understand, they can't control. And suddenly, they're lost. Their personalities disintegrate and they go from bad to worse, and they lose the ability to be people in their own right and to make choices. And I'd just say to youngsters today, don't start on that path. Once you start on it, it's a very slippery slope that ends in disaster. The sort of things that the children were saying were beyond the sort of things that they'd heard before. They were different, they were more bizarre, and they were horrific. You ask the children... When the 23 child victims were made wards of court, the judge also accepted that the children, from babes in arms to ten, had suffered incest and sodomy in the course of satanic rituals. The victims' stories are confirmed by a family member, who stumbled across a satanic ceremony by accident. I just walked in out of the blue and I just sort of seen all these masks, all these wigs and candles lit and everything. There was a cross on the floor. There was a cross on the wall inside the corner. There was also a sheep there involved. The sheep had been cut and the children was made to drink sheep's blood. And it, it just turned my stomach over. In court, 10 people were sent to prison for a total of 150 years. But there was hardly any mention of Satanism. The police say they heard the stories but couldn't prove the satanic connection. I accept there is the satanic abuse of children is no doubt a reality. I haven't personally experienced it, but I accept it as a reality. Unfortunately, in this particular case of these particular children, although they were habitually and horrendously abused, that abuse was not controlled by any satanic cult. Until now, police and social workers in Nottingham have been at loggerheads. But today, after we'd passed on information from our files, a new team of police and social workers have begun to reinvestigate the satanic aspects of this distressing Midlands case. Situations. This is the self-portrait, self-picture. In London, Natalie, now 15, endured 10 years of three satanic rituals every week. She's never spoken of it before. The star in the circle, what was on the floor, us kids used to stand in. And the lady who used to sort of like be in charge was at the front on the altar and the other people used to come in in black robes with hoods and used to come in, you know, chanting. And they went round the circle. And then uh, an animal would be killed. Natalie's mother knew nothing of her daughter's ordeal. Natalie was living with her grandmother at the time, and she was one of the abusers. 
Two years ago, Natalie broke free from the coven to be reunited with her horrified and now guilt-stricken mother. She was made pregnant and the child was allowed um, to grow to a certain age and then they aborted her baby and on a sacrificial table they sacrificed the life born child, not fully developed. 